Hey, I'm Ike, and I'm going to be drawing page 18 of First Sun and Sword today, and I'll talk about what I'm doing on the page and in general about being a comic book creator. We'll start with the thumbnail, and then I'll show every step, pencils through inks, and the final finished page at the end. And here's the thumbnail. Um, we have uh, the weaver, an old lady walking in dead center of that first panel. Um, into the room from the opposite end from where they had entered. Uh, and we got a reveal of kind of a medium shot of her and then sword speaking to her and then her sitting at the table and gesturing for them to join her. Uh, a lot of the dialogue I didn't even work out. Uh, and that's, that's been a consistent thing that I don't, I don't have a great idea. I just have like the basic things they have to say to each other. Uh, in my script sometimes. Uh, sometimes I have more interesting things that I can have them saying, but it really helps for me when I see the characters interacting uh, after I've drawn the page that I go ahead and write the dialogue at that point um, because I don't want them to just say something boring or just say what they're doing. Um, so really seeing how those work together uh, works. It's kind of like a one-man uh, the Marvel way, I guess you could say. But yeah, there's the uh, there's the plan for the page that I'm referencing. I've got my my phone uh, next to me or on my lap that you can't quite see there, and that's what I'm referencing when I uh, when I'm drawing the page. Okay, uh, I've been busy this week. I wrote a uh, a short horror story. It I'd been thinking about it for weeks, uh, months, even. And I was getting stuck anytime I would try to work on it. I just wasn't feeling like I was quite getting it. This time it worked out and it took most of a day, uh, <laughs> like a long day, but it, but it worked out. Um, so that's good. Like I, that's an important part of, for me, of what I do is writing and coming up with the stories. And, um, this one was a little more challenging because it's for an anthology and, and there's requirements on the characters and the story and things like that. And uh, I tend to do best writing when I can just write whatever I want. But but to fit it to fit it into a framework that's required like that's that was more challenging. Um, and it's for a different artist too. So that was definitely part of it too. Is when I'm writing for another artist, um, you know, it's a different it's a different thought process because. Uh, you want them to be happy with it. You want it to suit their art style um, and so on. Um, it's not just self-expression at that point. So a good experience. Uh, my first of that kind, really. But uh, first of many, I hope. I, I think I'll be doing more of that in the future. Um, okay, well, let's see. This week, um, yeah, thinking about my where I'm at in this process of being, being myself, being an artist here. Um, this is page 19. This is video 19 where I share my thoughts and, and I, and I share these pages I draw like it's, uh, it's already clear to me, you know, what I said from the start that, uh, my art is going to change. Um, especially, the process I go through as I scribble out these pages is going to evolve. Um, but, but it's all going to change over time. And so, so are my thoughts. Uh, my thoughts are going to change the things I, the, the way I talk about things and some of the opinions I hold are going to change, uh, over time too. Um, and that's, I guess it's kind of a weird feeling, um, to, to share this much of what I do and what I think, and then, um, know that, that it's not permanent, that it's, it's not, it's not excellent. It's not perfect. It's, it's just processing. That's why I call these videos draw process. Cause, and it, you know, it's just where I'm at at this moment. Um, and it'll change. So yeah, it's kind of a weird feeling. Um, and I, I feel like I'm changing, uh, uh, even from just the first page to to the page nineteen here, um, I see some changes in the way I'm I'm drawing this and um, feel like I wanna wanna continue to change in certain ways. Um, 
So, yeah, it'll be fun to see. It'll be fun to see. I just want to share it with you guys as I uh, as I go through those changes and try to process them. I guess uh, I guess one of those uh, changes. Um, I want to get. Uh, well, you know, I say looser or more cartoony, and I've said that before, but I guess it relates to how I how I see what I'm doing, like how I enjoy it. So like there is art out there that's just stunning, you know, like the artist is putting in hours and hours and hours of work to make this wonderful piece of art. And I love that, but what I'm doing is very different than that, that, um, same thing with like a writer that's going to work and work and work at a story until they get it um, you know, just crystallized, really like refined. Um, and and then there's that final polished piece and they're like, here you go world. I've, I've done the thing. And there are people that make comics that way. Um, where they, I mean, they'll make, they'll redraw the whole comic and, and perfect these, these things, perfect the story. Uh, usually it's more the art that has this much, uh, care given to it and caution and so on. But, um, but for me, I'm not trying to create that one perfect work of art and that one final, uh, story, but like, for me, this is more like, uh, acting or dancing or public speaking. Like it's more like public speaking than writing that, um, the drawing the page is a performance and I'm trying to convey, um, things in the, in that moment, but like, they're never perfect. Like they're just, they're just trying to get it conveyed and move on to the next piece of the story and, and let it feel like a performance that, that if, uh, if someone's reading the comic and flipping through the pages, I would, it'd be great if they felt like they're watching a play and the actor is me and they're watching me perform this play panel by panel. Um, and they're, they're on the edge of their seats, you know, what's he going to do next? Like, how does he convey, you know, this space, uh, how does, how does, what is the feel of, of, of the, of the art of the story of, of the lines, uh, that he's putting down. Um, and I'm just working on that. Uh, and it, it's strange because like if I just focused on the quality of the story, the quality of the art, I, I could make a technically more perfect book. Um, I, I, I know that I can, you know, make technically better pages than I'm doing here. And I could spend more time on the story to refine uh, every, every line that is said. I mean, for instance, like I said, I, uh, I, write my dialogue after I draw the page. Um, I have like, I have placeholder dialogue, but I know that I'm not going to be sticking with that. But once I see the finished page, I have them, I choose to have them say more interesting things that fit with the pacing better. Um, so it, there's a spontaneity to it that, uh, for me, I just, that, that's what I want to do. And, and that's what I, that's what I enjoy. Um, so, um, I hope that by doing it this way too, that it results in more, uh, quantity, um, a greater output than if I was much more cautious, uh, and controlled and getting things perfect before I share them with the world. Uh, it'll, it'll be a a much greater quantity. Um, and you know, have, have a very human quality to it. Uh, which, you know, maybe that'll become more and more important, uh, as we see what's happening with, uh, AI technology. Um, when, when AI can show us, uh, you want to see uh, any any movie or story? Um, it'll show you in any style you want. Um, 
you'll even be able to take your own you know you could draw a comic for example you could draw a comic that doesn't look so good like maybe you're maybe someone that's not a very polished artist and maybe they struggle with that but you could draw it and feed it into the ai and it would spit out on the other end great looking art in whoever's style you want uh And, and of course it can do that without, you know, feeding it any drawings at all. I mean, you could just give it prompts, which, which is what I've you know heard people doing. Just type in the prompt, get the, get the art on the other end, but you can all, we're going to be able to like even put more of your fingerprint into it than just typing a script. You could, you could put a lot more of your fingerprints on it, but still get it polished however you want to make it look, you know, like anything. So, um, I'm just making that point of how someone might use the AI technology to, to point out that, uh, for me, the, uh, there is no AI step that can be included in what I do. Um, not on the art side of things that, uh, the, 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 the fingerprints of the human that are in the pencils, that are influencing, you know, my, the, my choices and fingerprints on the inks. Uh, and the, even, even when I throw in the whiteout, like every, every piece of it is human. Um, and it's that performance. It's not about getting that perfect final thing. So, um, I think my approach will, uh, will have, um, well, staying power, uh, in a world that's, you know, overwhelmed with AI uh, art, at least for, for a time. Uh, yeah, so basically all that's to say uh, that I value this, looking at it from this performance aspect of the, uh, perspective rather than uh, as a finished product um, and preferring, you know, performance over uh, perfection. Um, expression uh, over product, um, whatever you want to call it, and um, and yeah, I guess that's the direction I see myself going is to even in, to increase that further. Um, can my can my lines get more expressive? Uh, my choices of where I place my lines, not necessarily making them, you know, have more texture and. Uh, movement or something. Um, can I, yeah. Can I express more with, with things? Uh, so that kind of gets into, um, the, uh, I've already drawn the page that you'll, you'll see next week, but I just drew that one today. Actually, I just didn't have this voiceover ready yet. But um, I struggled on that page, and uh, I realized I just was having troubles uh, really focusing. So, like when I was drawing a uh, sword, uh, he's he's holding out his hand, and like when I'm trying to draw his hands, um, I felt like I was trying to draw a hand. Like I I was I was struggling to to draw a hand that looked realistic, and and I was focused on how realistic it looked or whatever. Um, and then I realized like normally when I'm drawing, uh, and I guess it's felt that way on this page here too, there was some of that. Um, but where uh, normally when I draw, like I, I feel, um, sense, see, sword as a person like sword the character is holding out his hand in a certain way and then i'm drawing that rather than uh trying to draw a hand in a certain position a certain angle to the camera like uh and i don't know if that makes sense but i think that's a really valuable point is because uh, I see art uh, 
where I think people are falling into this trap where it looks like they're trying to draw a hand correctly or they're just trying, you know, they're trying to draw a hand. They're trying to draw a figure. They're trying to draw the car. Uh, the, if there's a car in the shot, but, and it, and it just looks like objects. They don't look, they don't have life. Um, and even if they're like correctly drawn, it's, well, they lack life. Um, and then, you know, I, I feel that dynamic in myself. So I imagine this is, this is possible that, that, that people that struggle with that, they might struggle to breathe life into it to, to see their character. Like I was saying, see their character, see, see the character with the car, you know, in the space, what are they doing? This especially works for characters more than describing like a car or, or a background, but especially with your figures, do you feel like you, your character's actually doing something and you're just trying to capture that with your drawing? You're just trying to draw what, what they're doing? Or uh, do you need your figure to, you know, sit down in a chair and now you've got to draw someone sitting? And uh, so it's like, how does one sit? What's the position of the body? Um, I got to get this right. Um, and, you know, some of that might be uh, the newer you are at it, the more difficult that particular thing is for you, the more you might focus on getting it, you know, quote unquote, right. But um, I don't think it's simply a matter of beginner versus veteran. Like, uh, it is a matter of attention, what you pay attention to and like perspective. So if you're looking at if you're trying to look at it as these are living characters and they're doing something, I'm trying to capture that acting. You're going to draw in a different manner than if you're just drawing objects and anatomy pieces. Um, so I, I want to stay in that headspace more. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, something here that's, maybe how it's felt kind of awkward seeing my, my development and thinking about my development. Uh, it relates to how it feels a little, uh, exposed, like I'm exposed or a little uh, awkward about it. Um, if you're, if you're a writer and you're writing in English, like there are words and yeah, you can, you, you can, you can have a different voices that you write with and all that, but like there's, there's language constructs you kind of have to work within. Um, but when you're drawing, it's like its own visual language. It's its own language. Um, and you, if you're drawing the way you draw, if you're not trying to just mimic someone else's style, it's literally like a different language. And you'll have some pieces of other languages in your DNA, but you're not even like totally aware of, of that. That's like subconscious. You're not really going to be totally aware of, of, of that. Um, and, and you have your own language and you're, you're showing your language, you're exposing that to the world and it might have bad things in it, you know, things people don't like. So you're very exposed in that position. Um, and it's hard to know what's the next stage of development for, you know, your language, your visual language, because there's no rule book. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to further refine my visual language and, uh, and try to really let it shine, let it show despite how exposed it can make me feel uncomfortable. I can feel with that. I really got to let it shine. And the, and the more I let it shine, uh, so it's not just about refining and improving your language, but really letting it shine, letting it show for what it is, uh, mistakes and all, right? Uh, this is what I'm describing here. Like, I feel like it's just mindset stuff. It's just like one way of looking at things. It's almost spiritual because it's, it's very mindset oriented, but, um, it, to me, this is, this is what it's all about. Like, this is important. Um, and I don't know how else to describe it, but I think it could be helpful to people. 
uh, to think about these things for some people, I would think. Um, cause yeah, that's what I, I want everyone to do the same as me. I mean, like, well, not everyone, but, uh, there's a lot of people out there. I would love, you know, that are, that are going to have something in common with me here that are like comic creators, for example. And I want to, in encourage them, you know, like give them permission to become better versions of themselves the same way I'm trying to do. So it seems like a lot of the things I think about in these videos and talk about here uh, have to do with the resistance uh, to being, you know, being able to develop ourselves, the, the things that get in the way, uh, of, of that process. Um, the thoughts that limit us from that. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's, I share these things cause I, that's what I experience. You know, I've struggled with uh, with these these ideas and with um, other you know ideas and that um, that I've been able to let go of more and more that do not reflect uh, what feels productive like healthy what what will lead towards uh, some you know better and better so uh, yeah this page. Uh, Sometimes these uh, pencils are sped up maybe five times. I think these are more like two times because um, my pencil's moving pretty slow here and we're 22 minutes in, we're still on the pencil. So um, I'm going to leave it that way because uh, some of these videos are a little bit shorter. I try to keep them between 20 and 35 minutes and this is on the long end, but sometimes when... Uh, you know, if it, leaving it slower like this, you're going to be able to see more of my decision making, the process like that I went through uh, to come to the finished image. Those little perspective lines I throw in, positioning of the figure or a different, uh, you know, like totem. Oh, um, you know, um, that's not the best word. I'm just struggling. Those, those pieces of the drawing that are like more important that that are they're kind of like uh places the eye are gonna is gonna go and that that are important to get in position correctly such as like a figure and another figure need to be positioned just right but like here with this woman the opening in the curtain behind her that needs to be positioned right there over her shoulder um and the table you know the table and and how much space i wanted that to take up on the panel those things those are those important uh, images that uh, in in the overall image that have to be in a certain position in relationship to each other, and that that plays with perspective. But anyways, I'm I'm getting off the rails. It's uh, you can see this process I go through um, better if I if it's slower, if the video is slowed down. Um, I I like how this woman uh, her face came out. Uh, I didn't really have a mental picture of what I wanted her to look like beforehand. Um, in my sketchbook, I had some uh, some different robes uh, on a page, so I found that page on that on the sketchbook that I remembered, and that helped me pick out a robe style for her. So I went with went with one and put that on the page, and I knew I wanted her to be old, so I started just drawing what felt right for that and. And I liked the thought of this long white hair, make it feel fine. Uh, and this is how she turned out. And uh, like, I second guessed it after I finished because I thought, um, well, maybe this is just like my bias showing. Like, I I have a certain picture of an old lady in my mind. Is are all my old ladies gonna look the same in every comic I do? But um, you know, what, what can I do about that? I can just keep expanding my horizons and keep, uh, um, drawing, you know, different looking people like in my sketchbook and so on. 
you know, just be, just try to be aware of that and, and grow in that area. Um, but I, I do like the way she looks. I do feel, uh, that she turned out to have character and, and be decent. Cause I don't know if she's ever going to appear in the story again. Maybe I shouldn't tell you that, but, um, she's not necessary to the rest of the story after this issue. Um, I might, you know, have her come make an appearance again, but, um, for me, the, the design, uh, of her character did not need to be, uh, worked on for, you know, weeks or something or days. If I did that with like everything in this con, there's so much, so many different like environments and cities and, and rooms and people and like that are going to be in this, this, uh, comic that I, I, I don't have the time to do that. I don't want to do that. It's too much work. I have to figure out how to shorthand things. That's, you know, back to my visual language, the metaphorically shorthand these things. Um, develop my own shorthand uh, to communicate something that you can imagine. So, I mean, I hope people would look at my pages and uh, they're not even, they're not looking at the art exactly. They're imagining um I've read comics that have like really uh, simple or abstract art or really cartoony, but it's actually scarier or feels more real than comics that have very realistic art um, or mature looking art, that it can feel more mature, feel more uh, mature emotions and stuff than, than something that's drawn with a more mature style. And, uh, and to me, that's, uh, that's a good sign. Uh, that's the kind of art that I like. Uh, and I'm trying to do something like that. And I think it has to do with this, uh, this idea of abstracting from reality and just kind of the shorthand. Like if someone is looking at my comic and they're looking at my art and they're not actually looking at my art, but they're imagining an actual character sword and an actual, you know, son and like the, uh, the, and, and everything in this world, if they, if they just, if it's like when you read a book and you're imagining, um, images from it because it's just words on a page and it's playing out in your mind. Like that's what I want to do with comics too. I want people to just have it playing out in their mind. Um, which influences the, the style of art that I want to do and continue to work toward. All right. Well, we are down to maybe five minutes, six minutes of the video here. Um, on the ink phase, um, I guess a thought here on these, the inking is like how fine of lines to make, um, you know, and when do I need a line at all? Like when it comes to like, creases in clothing, fabric, uh, wrinkles, hair. Um, I'm trying to do less and less lines like, um, with those things, like, like pretty much the ears on my figures, they no longer have any like inner lobe detail. It's just, it's just a round medallion of an ear, right? The outline of the ear. Um, that I'm trying to move that direction. Uh, I used to do more, um, more, more different, you know, smaller lines and so on with my, with my inks, uh, more shadow on figures and more folds in clothing and, uh, stuff like that. And I'm, yeah, I'm trying not to do as much of that cause I'd rather imply it, uh, and then have less less lines there because it goes back to like I want people to see it in their mind. Virtually, it's like not really there. I'll throw in a comment here about the uh, the inks. Um, so uh, I know like if if you've seen the finished pages and and you'll see it at the end of this video too. Uh, it's a very simple color palette. Um, it's basically monochromatic. Uh, well, 
it is. Yeah, I don't think there might be the, there might be the slightest variation, but it's basically monochromatic uh, colors. And then um, there's there's some range of of value or light, you know, light to dark, but uh, um, there's not a lot of detail in the colors. It's pretty flat, so I I don't want to convey. Uh, I don't want to leave too much to be conveyed in the color when it comes to like depth and, and value. So, um, I'm using my blacks here. You'll see like there on the wall is a great example and on the floor, uh, there's like a piece of trim work there and then a black wall and then some of the black floor. That's not where the rug, you know, the rug is yet, but, um, I'm using black there. Um, just covering the entire space with it. Um, it's, you know, it's technically has only indirect light on it, so it, it does represent light to some degree there. Um, but uh, and, and but technically, it's like it's darker. Um, whether it's you know paint or whatever that's on that wall, uh, it is darker than the curtains. So I can leave the curtains white and and just fake it, like put the wall all the way to black. Um, by doing that, I end up with an image that has, well, greater sense of depth, uh, and, and shape and shapes and stuff like here, this image of her, there's black on the side, and then there's a few black spots between the curtains and down in the folds of them. And this gives you a sense of, well, a nice composition and, and a sense of depth there. Um, so uh, I did that with like uh, the hanging uh, tapestries that they're white, but then a black, uh, they're well, they're a white border on black. I just went all the way to black. Um, and I, I could have, I could have done that in a different way, but um, I wanted, I wanted that, uh, that I guess weight and depth that the, the blacks would put there. So, um, And then like blacks on uh, on their cloaks in that first panel. Um, a lot of times I'm using blacks to, uh, you know, it's to indicate that there's shadow there um, to a degree, but it's also to separate foreground and middle ground. Um, so if the if the background is more uh, more white, let's say, then the foreground figure, I might put them mostly in shadow or put a lot of shadow on them to, to create that separation visually, uh, or vice versa, or a more white foreground figure and then more black in the background. And there's the finished page and there it is with color. And here's just these panels. You might be able to read it here, but you can read this whole comic on on the the website. It's it's a web comic, so every time I release this video, uh, there's going to be a a page added to the web comic. So you can read it there if you don't have time to or, or can't see it well here on this. Um, yeah, these word balloons. I use a Clip Studio, Studio Manga Studio. Um, hand draw the balloons well with like a polygon. Uh, option and uh, there it is thanks for watching we'll see you next week all right